it's finally time for me to build my engine for my own car. This has been a long time coming because there's been lots of things been, that have been getting in the way of this actually happening. For those of you who don't already know, this is a block for my 74 MGB GT. And this block is actually a 74 block. Not original to the car, but a 74 block. It's gonna be 60 over, got a wedged crank, max speeding rods, uh, the compression ratio, uh, depending on how you're calculating it, on my old computer program would be about 9.6 to one. According to some of the online calculators, it might be as much as 9.8 to one. Um, got a good harmonic balancer, got an APT VP12 cam for it, got um, chrome molly push rods, offset rocker bushings, ported head, all that stuff. Um, light and flywheel from on paper, it's a lot more motor than I thought I was going to ever be able to afford to build. But this money has been spent over many years because some of this, some of these parts are carried over from my last engine. So some of the things you need to make sure you take care of before you even start assembling an engine, and once it comes back from the machine shop, don't count on it being clean and ready to bowl everything together. You need to run through all the oil galleys, the whole block, everything, clean everything. I like to take the plugs out of the ends of the oil galleys and I tap those with pipe taps and I put in Allen head flush fitting pipe plugs. But we clean everything, clean it all out first before you put any of that stuff back in. Make sure everything's clean. And one of the easy things to uh, not think about or overlook is the lifter bores here. Every single motor I ever tear into always has a few lifters that aren't spinning within the bores. They need to spin within the bores while the motor's running in order to not wipe a cam. And um, that's very common on these things. So what I did is get test fit lifters in every single hole. Make sure they slide through there nice and easy. And there's no, it's not snug. It's not going to hang up and hone them. In my case, I did have a few of them that needed honed. And you can just use a small brake cylinder hone for that. It's, you don't have to get super fancy on that. Just make sure that they all slide in there nice and easy. And then you want to clean. I like to paint. I like to go ahead and paint my blocks before I put them together. And if you're using like the moss, or is it the classic color, I think it's called, it's, it's good paint as far as it holds up pretty well. Better than some of the other paints I've messed with over the years. But it does dry awfully slow. So you want to paint it a couple days in advance. This has actually been painted a couple weeks ago because I was still waiting on some, the last of the bits I needed to be able to actually start on it. I want you to get it ready where you're about ready to assemble, clean the bores out. Now, some people will say, oh, they need to be surgically clean. You clean them and clean them. WD-40, white rag, paper towels, whatever, something that's white you can see, and just keep cleaning and cleaning until you see absolutely nothing at all on the rag. I don't go to quite that nth degree. And the reason why I don't go quite to that nth degree, you know, I do clean them, but I don't worry about slight traces of material on the rag because as soon as you hit the key and start cranking this thing over, the piston's going up and down within the cylinder walls. The rings are gonna start bedding in. And the bedding in process is they're wearing. 
and the wearing in process of those rings is going to put far more material into the grooves and the oil than that little trace amount that you're still seeing. It's so hard for me to get my hand down in these. I just go till they look pretty clean. I don't worry about ever so slight trace amounts. I'm going to start by putting the crankshaft in. Now the bearings have these little tangs on them. They go into little slots here on the caps and the mains. The rods are the same way. And these are front and back. They orientation. Now I tend to like to use something like the Ultra Slick here. I've had really good success with this. Never had a, any problems yet. Some people like to use more of a thicker pasty style. Some people like to use just oil. I prefer not to use just oil. And for the bearings, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't tend to use the grease myself. Now on the camshaft, much thicker stuff is um, good to have, especially like on this, we're not gonna be installing this thing into the, to the car immediately. As I still got to take the other engine out, take the head off that, take it to the machine shop before it goes on into the, the this onto this engine. Now, do not assume that the crank is clean just because it's in a plastic bag when you get it back from the machine shop. Always clean it. Go th blow through every one of the oil passages, and the solvent and air. I mean, this thing's already been cleaned twice. Now we're not going through and checking bearing clearances because it's already been done. We're just doing assembly here. I tend to like to just do the, these two here, then do these two, then set up the thrust. Now thrust sometimes can take just a few minutes to set up. Sometimes it can take a long time. My old engine had, had another set of caps put in it from another engine and there was a slight misalignment there. It caused me all kinds of grief when setting this thing up. Because with that slight misalignment, with the cap being offset slightly, you end up with a thin, a thin one on this a thicker one here and a thin one here and a thicker one here to get it all come out. And that took hours to sort out. I did have a customer once who brought, who called me and said, Hey, I just put my engine together and it will not turn over on the starter motor. Yeah. He got it all the way in the car before he figured it out. And um, he assumed that since the crank was still sitting in the plastic bag, it was clean, he never cleaned anything. It took a little while of me talking to him and working through it to figure it out. Um, once I figured out what he was doing, it was like, oh my gosh, really? But he had actually brought it over to me in the back of his truck and it, already, and it damaged the crank in the process because he had taken the oil pan off and um, had one or two rod bolts loose, one or two rod caps loose, and they just beat the crank up. But um, 
I should have stopped right there and said, you know, you've already screwed this thing up, we're not going any further. But, you know, we went ahead and looked into it, see where he had screwed up. And after I got a couple rod, um, you know, mains or rods, I don't remember, taken apart, found that he had trapped dirt into the mains, which locked them up. And, um, the, and was just jammed into the bearings where it looked like someone had literally taken like a small punch and just tapped on it. it just really messed them up. And I started asking him, well, didn't you clean the crank or clean the bearings or any of that stuff before you put it together? And he was like, huh? The bearings were still in the box and the um, crank was still in the plastic. They were clean. Never trust it. Don't, don't automatically assume any of that stuff. Yes, this is ARP stud or bolts, so you take the lubrication on them. Special ARP Molly lube to get the correct torque readings. But every single time you bolt anything in, I get this done, get this one bolt on, spin it, make sure it spins. And then when you put the next one on, lock it down, spin it, make sure it spins. If at any point it doesn't spin properly, you got a problem. And that's what he didn't do. And the funny part about that was, he told me he had to take caps loose to get the timing chain lined up. And then he locked it all back down and put it in the car. At the end of the day, he had to start over, remachine everything, and he ended up actually just buying a used engine and tossing an engine in it. Now these actually get torqued to 110 foot-pounds rather than the 70 foot-pounds you would normally do. The mains on these things. And they, according to ARP, do it in three steps till you get there. I always tend to go over mine twice just to make sure. And then spin it. Make sure it spins. If it doesn't, you got a problem. Do that with every single one of them. So now this is a new block to me. I'm going to make the assumption at this point that standard thrust washers are going to work. Put one in the back here, and then one in the front here. And if it's too tight, they don't fit, whatever, then we gotta play with these which I'll sand on the back side of these to get them to fit. And these are a little on the tight side. That's the first time I've had a standard set that was actually tight, so these are probably not within tolerance. I might have some other sets. I may go take a look, see what else I have. But these have got to be near mark standard, but yeah, it should be fitting. So now I got a combination of ones from two different sets. I had a set that measured a little bit thinner, 
putting two of them in here was too much clearance, but putting one from each actually gives me really good. We went between four and five thousandths clearance and measuring this, the four thousandths fits and the five thousandths is a bit too tight. So that would be right on four, four and a half thousandths. That's good. The next thing we got to do is we got to put the upper main cap or the lower main cap on with the same combination in them to see if everything still fits and make sure that we're got we still have the clearance we want down here what I'll usually do is do one one in here to make sure I'm still getting my clearance down on this side and then check it up here and then swap it around do it again on the, and and then put them both in that way I'm accounting for any possibility of this thing being potentially shifted one way or the other and you always want to put the, the brass side towards the crank and the steel side towards the main cap. So this one's probably going to take me a little while to get. But basically the process here, like I got one shim or one thrust washer in the back side right here right now. And we should have that same movement a four to five thousandths back and forth and then pulling it back, I should have the same amount of space here that I was showing just on the bottom, which I had a little over four thousandths. Now what I'm seeing is about five with this one here. So I need to take that thing. We measure that the thickness of this one which I know what it is. We take the thickness of this and we measure this and we want this to be roughly one thousandths thicker than that one and that should get us the right clearance there. This is one that's a little thinner than this. And then we go do the same thing on the front without the back one in place and get the same clearances until we got that same four and a half thousandths clearance up here as well with nothing in the back. That way we know that they're, they're going to be not riding just on one thrust. So after about an hour of sandling and fiddling, fiddling around and test fitting, I finally got it where we want it. Where you're pushing all the way this way, you measure the fourth, about four to five here and all the way this way, I'm measuring about four to five here. So that is the crankshaft in there and spinning freely.